So in this video, I want to talk about Sultan Muhammad Shah and the foundation of the All India Muslim League. And in particular, I'll actually uh, cite some sources both during the video and also in the uh, comments below the video in the description. But really, the, the main year in which I think a lot of stuff started to happen was around the year uh, 1906. So in 1906, Sultan Muhammad Shah basically led a Muslim delegation. He led a Muslim delegation to meet with uh, Lord Pinto. And, and, and Lord Minto was the um, Viceroy of India. Actually, this is a picture of him right here, Lord Minto. He was the vice, Viceroy of India. And he actually was alive from uh, 1845 until uh, 1914. That's when he was uh, alive. And, and uh, uh, he actually met with uh, the delegates that, that uh, Sultan Muhammad Shah brought to him. And, and actually, this took place uh, in Simla. And Simla is in the uh, kind of northern part of India. It's actually about quite a far, quite a good distance, about 1170 miles away from Calcutta. It's above uh, Delhi. And overall, I think Sultan Muhammad Shah felt that Muslims in that region should be more engaged in the political process to ensure that they were really represented accordingly. In other words, they, they got an adequate uh, degree of representation. And the delegation that he led actually had quite a number of very influential people, uh, including people like uh, Mohsin al-Mulk, uh, Hakim Ajmal Khan, Sir Ali Imam, Sir uh, Muzamala Khan, Sir Rafiquddin Ahmad, uh, Sir Muhammad Shafi, Sir Abdul Rahim, Sir uh, Salimullah, uh, Justice Shadin, and, and a bunch of other people. All right, and in, in a book by Syed Razi Waste uh, called Lord Minto and the Indian Nationalist Movement, 1905 to 1910, which was published in Lahore in 1976, on pages 69 to 70, he writes, uh, Syed Razi writes, Quote, Minto received the Muslim deputation on October 1st, 1906. 35 prominent Muslim leaders from all over India, 35 prominent Muslim leaders from all over India gathered in the ballroom of the Viceregal Lodge in Simla. Their leader was a young man of 29 years, His Highness Aga Khan, Sir Sultan Muhammad Shah Aga Khan from Bombay who besides being the head of the rich Ismaili sect of Muslims, had close and friendly relations with prominent British people. Okay? And basically as a result of this meeting, this, this meeting with uh, Lord Minto, uh, there was a memo that was submitted to him, and basically the memo asked that Muslims be afforded a position that was commensurate with the size of their population and also commensurate with the their level of political importance. All right, and so overall, I mean, they, they had a really good meeting with Lord Minto. He listened to their concerns, and then he provided some degree of Muslim representation to elected bodies, and this actually came in the form of what were called the Minto, the Minto Morley reforms, the Minto Morley reforms. Okay, and these reforms were uh, from, I believe, uh, 1909, okay, to give you a sense of time. All right. Now, the next big thing uh, that I want to point out, again, and also in 1906, and I mentioned this was a very pivotal year, on October uh, 24th, 1906, uh, Sultan Muhammad Shah wrote a letter to uh, Mohsin al-Mulk, who was a uh, well-known political leader in that region, and he basically wrote in that letter that there was a need to establish, and I'm actually going to quote from that letter right here, um, it may well be that the provincial associations should be formed with the aim of safeguarding the political interests of Muslims in various portions of India, and similarly, some central organization for the whole. So in other words, he was really talking about the need to establish a broader Muslim organization for political empowerment. All right. And then later on that year, in December, December 30th, actually, of 1906. Uh, this letter was actually passed around and read at the All India Muslim Educational Conference. So the, uh, the All India uh, Muslim Educational Conference. And I've actually done some videos on, on that conference as well, so you can take a look at some of the uh, videos I did there. So the All India Muslim Educational Conference. And basically, 
uh, it was the letter was circulated among delegates, and there was unanimous agreement that they should establish what then became known as the All India Muslim League. And, and really, the the league had three primary aims, and let me kind of highlight those what those aims are. So, so one of the first major aims um, of the league was to uh, so number one, it was to basically establish or promote Muslim loyalty. So promote loyalty. Uh, promote loyalty to the British. Okay, promote loyalty to the British. Okay, the second major aim of the League was to kind of protect and advance, protect and advance Muslim rights in that region. Okay, protect and advance Muslim, uh, and this is not just rights, I guess maybe political rights. Political rights. And then finally, um, the third aim was to kind of prevent, to prevent hostility, um, and this is primarily hostility uh, between factions, for example, between the uh, the Muslim community and others, um, so between Muslims and other communities, between Muslims and other communities. All right, so. Basically, Sultan Muhammad Shah was, um, after this league was formed, the All India Muslim League, Sultan Muhammad Shah Aga Khan served as the president uh, of the league. Okay, he was elected president. And the honorary secretary under him uh, was, uh, was a person by the name of uh, Saeed Hussein uh, Bilgrami. So, Saeed. Hussein Bulgrami served as uh, the honorary secretary under uh, Sultan Muhammad Shah's president, and in his book uh, called "The Crescent Land of the The Crescent in the Land of the Rising Sun," uh, M. Abdulaziz wrote. This, this book was published in London, in 1941, on page 140. M. Abdulaziz wrote, "Quote: It is well known that His Highness the Aga Khan was the first president of the All India Muslim League." And the way in which he took a keen and sympathetic interest in the organization and development of the League is shown from his letter of appreciation in his capacity as its first president. And then in another book called The Foundations of Pakistan, which was edited by Syed Shafridin Firzada from Dhaka in 1969, in the first volume on page 33, he writes, quote, In tracing the origins of Pakistan, some commentators give decisive importance to the separate electorates secured by the Muslim deputation which was received by the Viceroy Lord Minto at Simla on October 1st, 1906. The event has been described in the diary of Lady Minto as, quote, an epic in Indian history, unquote. So clearly this was a, a keystone event, a, a turning point, if you will, um, in, or maybe an inflection point, if you will, for uh, promoting Muslim rights and really leading ultimately to the foundation of Pakistan as an individual or, or independent uh, Muslim state. And then according to the Encyclopedia Americana, uh, first volume, page 327, quote, the delegation established the Muslim League, which carried the seeds of Muslim separation and the eventual creation of Pakistan, unquote. Then Aziz Ahmed also wrote in his book, uh, Islamic Modernism in India and Pakistan, uh, that, quote, one of the chief promoters of this design of Muslim separatism in, subcontinent, in the subcontinent was the Aga Khan. So clearly his, his role was, was very prominent in this regard. Okay, uh, And he basically stayed president for, for a number of years. And then he actually uh, tendered his resignation uh, in 1913. So maybe um, he was president basically from about uh, uh, 1906. Then he basically resigned in uh, 1913. He, uh, he resigned, or he tendered his resignation, but he didn't actually leave right away because they really did need support for a bit longer. This was in, in March of uh, 1913. Uh, he tendered his resignation at the annual session, which was held in Lucknow. Uh, and Sultan Muhammad Shah Khan said, quote, Resignation frees me from that necessarily judicial character that attaches to the presidency. The league does not need a leader, but leaders. And so I think he was resigned to allow more people to uh, to help lead this, this very important movement. And he basically continued to remain president for another year to ensure a suitable uh, transition. And then finally, in 
1914, he was made uh, vice president of the league. Uh, and that was in February of 1914. And then finally, in the eighth session in 1915, in 1915, Sir Ali Muhammad Khan, so uh, Sir Ali Muhammad Khan was made the actual uh, president of the All India Muslim League. And he at that time was the Raja of Mahmoud Abad, and um, he was elected as the second president.